this is part two of our video. I've left the diagram here just for a reference point. We want to find the electric field value at this position here, midway between these two charges. Now, electric field is a vector, so we need lots of space to calculate this one. So let's say this is the electric field 1. So electric field 1 then will equal 9 times 10 to the 9th multiplied by 6 times 10 to the minus 6 all divided by 0 0.035 squared. Electric field 2 will be what's caused by the negative 4 microcoulomb charge. So electric field 2 is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th. And notice this time I will keep it as a positive 4 times 10 to the minus 6. We will discern direction in negative and positive later. Divide this by 0 0.035 squared. Electric field 3 will be because of the 8 microcoulomb charge. So electric field 3 equals 9 times 10 to the 9th. And we'll multiply this by 8 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by 0 0.0606 squared. And let's record all the values for this. Electric field 1 Okay, it's going to have a value of 4.4 .4 times 10 to the 7th. And that's Newton's per coulomb. Electric field 2 is going to have a value of 2.9 times 10 to the 7th. Newton's per coulomb. And electric field 3 is going to have a value of 2.0 times 10 to the 7 newtons per coulomb. Now we need to uh, do our x's and y's and summarize, and then of course we will Pythagorize and inverse tangentize to get our value for the electric field at this position here. So I'm just going to write x and then y here. And then we'll fill in our chart. But we need to discern the directions for all of these initially here. OK, electric field 1. It's because of the uh, six microcoulomb charge. So we'll pretend to put a positive test charge here. That's going to be repelled to the right. Okay, so that'll be a positive x direction. I'm just going to put 4.4 here. They're all 10 to the 7, so I'm just going to put 4.4. That's positive. Now the next one, the uh, negative microcoulomb charge here, negative 4 microcoulomb charge, will also attract this to this direction. So that's another positive vector. So I'm just going to write 2.9 there. And then we see our other one here, our 8 microcoulomb charge, is going to repel this downwards, this positive test charge downwards. So I'm going to label that one as a negative 2.0. OK, and then all we need to do is summarize these. So we have a negative 2.0 okay, for our y direction there. OK, and then we have a positive 7.3 okay, for our x direction. If I want the electric field resultant, then I'm going to Pythagorize our sums together. So that'll equal 7.3 squared plus a 2.0 squared. Notice how I'm not including my negative because I know I'm going to square it. Okay, and that turns out to be a net resultant okay, of 7.6. And then I will add back the times 10 to the 7 newtons per coulomb. Okay, and now we need to figure out the angle. So tangent of theta is going to equal our y over x. So 2.0 divided by 7.3. And I will need to inverse, take the inverse tangent of that. Okay, and that's 15 degrees south of east. And that's our resultant vector. But we're going to be finding a force vector soon. OK, let's continue our question. What if we put a 12 picocoulomb charge in place of our proton? So that's a picocoulomb charge, 12.0. What electric force would be acting on that? Well, electric field is force electric per charge. OK, so I'm going to calculate this value. 
using that equation, electric field is force electric per charge. So what I'm going to say is 7.6 times 10 to the 7 is equal to force electric divided by 12 times 10 to the minus 12, because that's what a picocoulomb charge is. And the value for the electric force is going to equal 9.1 times 10 to the minus 4 newtons. And the uh, angle will still be 15 degrees south of east because the electric field points in the same direction as electric force. 